The IRS said today that its crackdown on identity theft has cut the number of fraudulent tax refunds nearly in half. But another type of fraud is on the rise. Anna Werner says more than 400,000 Americans fell victim last year to imposter scams. Richard Tanner says the call took him by surprise. I literally was about to hang up when they said, are you at this address? And it was my uh, P.O. box that I've had for many, many years. The man on the other end said he was Sergeant Wade Marshall with the Sheriff's Department, and Tanner owed fines of $1,600 for failing to appear for jury duty. He immediately launched into this very polished sounding, I mean, you know, very authentic sounding speech about, um, we're calling you as a courtesy. You have several outstanding citations. Tanner told him he had served jury duty, but the sergeant gave him case and citation numbers. He instructed Tanner to pay up immediately or face a warrant for his arrest. The call went on for nearly 40 minutes on his landline before Tanner used his cell phone to call the local sheriff's department. The first thing I said was, is there a Sergeant Wade Marshall? And I barely got the words out when the, the real sheriff's department said, no, it's a scam, hang up. Law enforcement would never make such a request. U.S. Marshals Service Assistant Director John Bolin says it's a growing problem nationwide. The scammers are extremely well versed in the judicial process. They have frequently used real judges' names, real names of U.S. Marshal Service employees. They've even spoofed telephone numbers that are real telephone numbers to federal courts and to U.S. Marshal Service offices. Monica Vaca is with the Federal Trade Commission. There are probably a lot of people out there who are hearing this and saying, ha, I wouldn't fall for that. But the fact of the matter is that when you get one of these calls, they sound really real. Scammers are very, very good at making you believe that you've got an emergency situation on your hands and they have a really powerful way of getting you to act on that. Some red flags with these imposter scams. They typically call you on the phone, but most government agencies will send you a letter. And scammers often ask to be paid with gift or prepaid cards, which the government won't do. The best advice for consumers who get calls like these, Scott, just hang up. Be warned. Anna Werner for us. Anna, thank you.